how to get a personal loan for business with a longer term, lower rates, and monthly repayments, as well as a startup loan. If you're a complete startup with pre-revenue, how can this happen with perhaps credit, revenue being a factor, some type of revenue, and so forth? Hi, my name is Michael with Viral Funding Solutions. I'm a business loan broker expert who's been able to help a lot of businesses and business owners get the right type of financing, whether that's a personal slash startup loan, credit lines, building their business credit, improving their personal credit through other means. There's credit repair, other forms of financing, unsecured, meaning non-collateralized or secured, backed up by collateral, SBA loans, and so much more. So you don't miss a single beat of content I'll be coming out with in the future. Please subscribe and click on that bell notification icon so you do not miss any future videos. Let's get right into it. So you see on the screen here a big yes in the image. And I want to help you get that yes immediately or whenever it is you need to. But most important is getting the right education and value from content like this that you can't find very easily all over the web let alone YouTube or other forms of content. And yes, you might be able to find similar content, but the amount of value you'll be getting, and if you've been watching me for some time, you know what I can deliver in the way that I do. Now, getting a personal loan, you might be thinking, can I do this without verifiable income? How about no credit checks, no personal guarantees? How about this and that? What about adding a personal loan slash startup loan on top of another type of service. And I'm going to be jumping into that towards the end of this video. So make sure you stick around. Now, let me scroll down here where I have a list of details for a personal slash startup loan situation. And I want to say this, as you're seeing that on the screen here, keep in mind, if you are pre-revenue, it'll be most difficult. Yes, there are personal loans out there. You can say where there's no verifiable income, you don't have to show any kind of income. Maybe you don't have a job or there's some other factors at play with employment. And it'll be more of an emphasis on your credit, your debt to income ratio and where you currently are positioned. Your history will play a huger role. Uh, but having verifiable income is a way for the lender to be able to assure themselves that you can repay the debt. And without being able to pay the debt and then going into a default, getting into troubles if you're not offering a collateral uh, how is the lender going to feel about that and they can't take your asset or assets and be able to sell it in the case that they need to get their money back in other ways so over here personal slash startup loan option and they're somewhat intertwined so when you are building your business and i know if you're here looking at this and going well i just needed a personal loan for car reasons or for student reasons or whatever that may be this is not exactly that video. I'll try to leave another video down below if it's there in time. If not, it's okay on other forms of personal loans, not used for business. Because in this one particularly, as you see on the screen, I have put here another great option behind the MCA. And this is a testament to different types of funding solutions. So I could have said an unsecured term loan, a line of credit, a business line of credit, a true one, a merchant cash advance. Maybe there's equipment financing and play. Well, in this example, I just wanted to uh, briefly put that another great option behind the MCA and even in addition to that if you're looking for the most amount of funding and I'll show you how that can make sense is a personal slash startup loan but you'd want to have at least a 680 experience if not at least a 700 and 700 is realistically the score we're looking to get if you're at a 680 your debt to income ratio you know that better be low uh, having too high above 30 uh, 43 percent 50%, now you're getting into higher, uh, like, you know, utilization, whether it's now or you have history of it. Uh, maybe there's some late payments or something derogatory, something to be concerned about with your history and how you take on debt and how you manage your debt. How much have you taken in debt? And perhaps where have you been at certain periods and making those payments? And there's a lot more we look at, like the background. And that's why credit is such a huge emphasis when you're looking at getting a personal loan. Because it's also a determination of you and your character, your flaws. What are you doing? How are you making your payments? What is the likelihood of if we gave you a, a certain amount in installment loans, LOC or credit cards, would you be able to handle those payments? And I'll get into some of the rates here in a moment. But that's one factor that we look at when we go into the pre-approval. We can do a soft pull. And so over here, you have the requirements. 50000 in annual revenue is what we would require. So this does have an income verification side to it. 
And that's very normal. Again, it comes back to how are you going to be able to make the repayments? If it's just based on credit, will they be looking at collateral? Will they be okay with just no income verification? And then the rates are just spiking high because you're a much higher associated risk this being commercial. And so think about it in that case, if this is your alternative and it's your greatest one, what are the risks involved in terms of if I take this money, how can I use it appropriately? Not just taking money just to quote unquote survive. I get that might be a portion of it. But if you're taking this money to grow and expand, that's what you want to use it. And I'll get into that in a little bit more. Zero time in business, but it requires at least five trade lines. Have you built at least five trade lines, personally speaking? Those accounts, mortgages, car auto loan, maybe student loans, other loans, maybe personal loans you've taken out in the past, other types of personal loans, uh, startup loans, whatever that may be. There's a more conjunction of them, installment loans, revolving uh, loans credit lines that all exists out there, but it requires you to have at least five trade lines. So that's a caveat. You don't have to have any time in business. Yeah. You can be a complete startup, but you have to have at least five trade lines built. And why is that like, Oh no, it's a huge thing. Like what are you building underneath your personal credit? How much history have you built? That can also determine when we do like a soft when we look initially into your credit, we'll be able to see the, the history of it. We'll be able to see what you're doing now currently, what could happen in the future. We can make assessments to see what your debt to income ratio is, your utilization, uh, how impactful it is right now in the economy in relation to your credit, in relation to perhaps with your business and your industry specific and certain things like that. But we're lending it more towards your personal side. So we have to understand what all have you built and we can do an initial credit soft credit check on that. And then 20000 to 500000 are the approval amount. So it gives you enough wiggle room to say, well, I wanted to get 200000 for example. And here's a situation where I have with business owners that have come to me and they keep coming to me for this. And it's because I also work with the best lenders and underwriters. I've vetted them through. I know what works and what doesn't. Don't go apply in everywhere and anywhere because that'll only cost you. You'll end up having headaches and frustrations day in and out, week in, months, years pass by. And now you look at your email. You probably have other emails that you had to set up or erase all this. And you're starting to find out that people just keep coming up. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. I'm gonna go ahead and pause that, apologize. And people just keep coming back and forth with all of this. And you're just frustrated because every email you see, even if you haven't opened it, you open it and they're like, um, you're pre-approved, come and apply with us. If you continue the application or you're know, like, we're not even continue anything. Who are they? And somebody else tries to impersonate maybe myself there have been people out there who can do those things and you have to be very careful. But uh, I've vetted the best and I've been in this industry, industry for some time. And I know that if you can't get approved traditionally through the bank, if you can't get uh, approved through a private lender for an SBA loan or we'll say an unsecured term loan line of credit and then SBA government related, and those don't work out in your favor. Maybe it's not what you were wanting in terms of the amount or it just wasn't the right rate or time but a personal loan would work, but you're like questioning, should I put it underneath my personal and add more debt, add more utilization over the term? And then will I be at in a good position? Should I pay this off earlier? And do I really need all that time? You have to weigh those things. And sometimes this is your only option. Other times you can add this on top of something else, but I can communicate this with you, with my team and who I associate with. Oh, I just noticed that the light was right there. I have the mirror behind me. Usually I'm in a different setup, but I have family over through uh, California and I'm uh, having to readjust office space and all this stuff to accommodate, which is cool. Uh, so over here, the 700 plus experience for 6% to 18% cost of capital. That is the rate. You've probably seen it being even higher, like 35%. And if it's, we're talking then more of a personal loan used for other personal reasons, not exactly that you'll use it for your business. Uh, but if I'll get into some of the rates and you know how that's determined in a moment, but that's what you'll see 24 hours, one to two weeks time to approve and fund. Nope. Now, before you hear this next part, keep an open mind about it. Don't shut down and I'll cover why this is, excuse me, the note origination fee. It is 15%, which I know it sounds high it does to me too, but that's how the lenders, they compensate themselves by offering you a low interest somewhere between 6 to 18% in the market with monthly payments and terms from one to five years. 
So the origination fee, that's not something you usually see on websites. They don't want to disclose that. They don't always want to show you that because that'll then quote unquote scare you away because you have no further education on like, why is this good? And why is it, bad? when is it good? When is it bad? So it's the difference between good and bad debt. Are you taking this money and you're just using it just to stay afloat? Yeah. But are you also using it for like, I want to purchase use it towards a down payment on the purchase of a vehicle. And then the other one, I already have the merchant cash advance or already have uh, everything else that I need in place. I just need to make sure I get the down payment or I need to make sure if I can't get an equipment loan traditionally, I have to come through a personal loan or I didn't want an MCA rate. So I, the only thing I'm left with is a merchant cash or a personal loan. I couldn't get unsecured term loans or lines of credit. We all, we can leverage your personal credit and then we can see that, but it could still be hard at that point, especially when it's a line of credit and it's a personal loan that are, you know, weighed heavily on credit. And you're more, a little bit more lenient on that business line of credit than, I mean, a personal loan here for business. It's a bit different, but that's how they compensate themselves. It's like the employee retention tax credit program where you can get up to 26,000 for employee for keeping people on your payroll, where there is a like quote unquote success fee of 15 to 20% or so. And that's because they're having to fulfill on the notes. They're having to fulfill on the documentation. They're having to fulfill on extra steps that have to be supplied. And I'm doing that on my part too. And we're having to see, okay, what do we have to put together? What more needs to be asked? What do we have to fulfill and put together on our end contracts or whatever that may be? Uh, and so it takes a bit of time, especially on the ERC side where they're putting notes together and submitting it over uh, where they need to for on your behalf. So you have to be considerate of that. And it's not a big deal. If you're taking that money, you're probably doubling, tripling, quadrupling it. Even if you're just saving money for a mortgage, you have multiple mortgages, you want to keep your payments low. Maybe you're at a consolidating refinance situation. Uh, that can help too. You have to also look at the long-term play and think to yourself, if, yeah, I'm paying an upfront 15% origination fee, but I'm going to keep my capital less than 20% if possible in the market for how long? One to five years. So you stretch that rate out and that rate doesn't look so bad after all or the success fee or the origination fee, as you say, excuse me. And it's not even bad to begin with. It's just our notion of why should we pay more for something and get less? No, you're going to get more over time. It just depends on how multiplier and how you take that funding and how you're using it. Are you saving it? Are you using it more for a growth and expansion setup and or what's the purpose here and it works out in your favor, a lot of cases, you just don't have that plan and set in place where you understand your potential, the ROI of it, or your cash flow, positive, negative. You don't understand those things quite yet, especially if you're just getting started. So when you've been in this for long enough, like myself, you'll understand this. When you take personal loans, you take any other type of financing, you'll know what you get, you get yourself into. Important details, have less than 35% utilization, minimal recent inquiries, strong credit history, no recent negative items. So this comes back to how much can you get approved for? We're going to look at your debt to income ratio, your DTI on your personal side. I know there's DTI personal and in business and do we do a conjunction? Depends on the type of loans, but we're talking personal loans here today. And that is weighed heavily on how much debt you're taking on uh, versus how much and how much it takes to fulfill on those and your grossly income, uh, your gross income. And so how are you doing there? That will shape and determine your debt to income and a few other steps that we do in calculating. And so making sure you have even far less than 35%, I would say less than 20%. If you can shoot for that, your approval odds of getting more in comparison to your verifiable income can over, overcome that. And I'll show you that how that looks in a second. The documents that are required for pre-approval, you get an online loan application that I can supply to you in time and how to get the necessary attention for what your business needs. I'll leave a questionnaire form down below where you can get a very personalized and customized email response on your best funding option and options thoroughly broken down step by step. And by yours truly, by an expert, I will show you all your options, whether you can qualify for them or not. So you have no question at the end of the day, uh, application links, documentation, how it should be supplied, where you can supply it, what I would expect from you. And literally it's like this, you can get done quick, get the fund same day, next day, one to two days, one to five days, depends on the program, six to eight weeks, SBA loans. I can show you all these different alternatives and I can show you uh, additional on top of this, if those are available. And if not, a long-term strategic partnership and roadmap to how to get to that point. So if your point is to say, I want an SBA loan, maybe we just need to work on your profitability. We need to work on increasing your month-to-month -month revenue, your depositing, uh, your negative balances, your charge-offs, uh, 
anything, the list goes on and on. So if you're approved, you will need to supply to me driver's license, bank statements, tax returns, pay stubs, utility bill. And there could be a little bit more, but that's what I want to leave it at a surface level. And you can gather this and send it over to me. It's okay via email. I organize it safely and securely before I send it over to the lender and my team of underwriters and my underwriter. So make sure that you have that and I'll communicate what I need from you at that point. If you're pre-approved, um, it'll be something like you've been pre-approved and if you have verifiable income of a certain amount. And the way we determine uh, if we want to see that verifiable income versus how much you can get, again, is your debt to income ratio and those factors that play in. Uh, and then your bank statements can help and a few other components to do more of a verification if you have that. And we can talk about verifiable income in terms of, and I wrote a few uh, amount of notes here just to make sure I didn't miss anything, but I have done this over and over. Just make sure you have tax returns or pay stubs, et cetera, similar as you see there on hand. And you may have already supplied it to me and I had already looked through it and I had confirmed with you via email what's our next step. So you have verifiable income, for example, I'll show you one in a moment. Personal loan, pre post pre-approval, certain documentation that I will need color picks of the front and back of your ID, most recent utility bill in your name. So that factors in this part right there. Voided personal check in your name where money will be deposited. We just need to know that. And that's very common. Even if some of these weren't listed up here, it's fine. And that's because we want to verify to make sure everything is legitimate, that we are depositing to the right account. It's not like anything fraudulent. Uh, proof of income, like I said, if you are employed by other, all pay stubs received within the past 30 days and last year's W-2. If you are self-employed, last two years of personal and business tax returns, all pages, all schedules, last three months of personal bank statements showing your payroll deposits, all pages. Please make sure all four corners of the docs are visible. And so sometimes this, this part even varies at times. So it's not, it's usually like that, but I'm going to go ahead and organize it a little bit different for you. So to proceed with the next stage of funding, we require these documents below. Colored driver's license, as I said, showing all four corners, front and back. Social security card, same as, as the driver's license. Last three pay stubs, if you have those there. Personal tax return, 2019 to 2020. Business tax return, 2019 to 2020. If it's for, if it would, depends on your industry, so or on your industry slash um, entity setup, LLC, S Corp, C Corp, et cetera, for both S Corp for this situation. Last three months of personal and business bank statements, personal voided check, recent utility bill with name and address. Uh, and we can factor in, you know, personal tax returns of 2021 and just the last year since we're in 2022. And then we may need a little bit more to look through. But if we have that on hand, great. And I'll ask for more documentation if necessary from you. It's very standard. So an example here, if you were if you were having verifiable income, let's say at 90,000 a year in tax returns, pay stubs, etc., we may be able to provide you with an approval of 40 to 120,000 via combination of installment loans, lines of credit or credit cards. Now, how is that again determined? And that is based upon your DTI, your tax returns, we look at it and we make a determination on that with the soft pool initially when we're looking through your credit, seeing your utilization, how high, what are your debts? Um, so somebody who has, you know, we're gonna wanna verify 125,000 a year to give them maybe less, but it's because we're looking at their DTI and that's just how it adjusts. But for this, you can see an example of 40K to 120K. And there are a few more other ones that we can do. Like if you have verifiable income of 123,000, we might be able to approve between 30 to 75K via similar. And there's a lot more examples that I could have put on display here, but you can kind of see that range between where you can associate with. So if you're a business owner looking for a hundred thousand, you're like, I can't take anything less. I really needed a hundred thousand at once. Then you get approved for a hundred, or even if you didn't get approved for a hundred, let's say you got approved for maybe half of that or 80,000, where's that other 20,000 coming from? Then I can work with you on that and say, Hey, this should have come from this. Let's already start working on this. In the meantime, while you're looking to get approved for this, this is what I would like you to do next. Or we can wait for this. Or if I know more of an answer of, Hey, this is ideally what you probably get approved for more about 80,000 or so. Then let's look at, an alternative, start working on your personal credit or getting access to credit lines, business credit cards. You could add on top of that. Maybe you get an additional 10 to 20,000 there, and then you work off of that. And you can always come back and try to get more. So realistically asking yourself is, what am I using these funds for? Is it of most benefit? Am I just using this and I'm going to be causing myself even further headaches and issues? Or am I taking this and uh, making the most of it what I have, even if I had a 
greater interest rates and higher interest rates just meaning you have high debt to income and try to keep that number low and when we're looking at your background educational job employment history uh, who you are and what you do these are factors into what gets you approved and without going into the actual credit reports because i don't want to disclose that here uh, sometimes i even ask for uh, a credit report or let me see your credit reports you could do a soft pull on that so it doesn't hurt and I'll try to leave more information down below. I don't always ask for it up front. We can do it in the meantime or, or after the application, uh, before the pre-approval stages, we can do all that. So just to recap, how do you get a personal loan for business with a longer term, lower rates and monthly repayments? Just in general, have a lower DT DTI. Uh, have the right documentation that you can supply. Have stronger details, stronger revenue, lower debt to income ratio, manage your payments better, pay on time. Uh, a lot of stuff that comes with personal loans, using the right personal credit cards, uh, making sure you pay on time and it reports and reflects accordingly sooner rather than later. Closing dates, due dates, making sure you know those things, the differences of almost uh, the percentage and all overall cards in utilization of what you're using and making sure you keep those low and reoccurring automatic payments if possible and how many times you're making those payments per month or how many payments you're taking on a month. And there's so much more that goes on with it, but you do have to have stronger credit. And an alternative to this program, if I haven't mentioned this, there's a credit line program where you can get 0% interest for six to 18 months with 0% interest. Yes, that is true. Uh, usually non-collateralized. And yes, there are personal guarantees until you build that repertoire of a profile. And then later down the road, there are credit issuers who don't accept that a lot of times. But in that meantime, you have to build yourself in that direction. And there's a reasoning behind why people ask for social security numbers. So they can verify you and they can also see uh, your personal credit and EINs and all this stuff included, if so. So don't try to walk away from that. And I know some of us are struggling with our credit and we don't want to show it and we don't want to have other inquiries. But the truth is of the matter, you might have to just get it repaired. You have to focus on better debt managing, taking on good debt versus bad debt, just I'm going to type pinch money versus growth and expansion money and using it for the right purposes. This can take you up to higher levels if used correctly by itself. You can use it with other things like the credit line hybrid, which is a credit line stacking program where you can use business credit cards, multiple, and then withdraw lines. Uh, you can use that as uh, that cash flow that you pull out and use it for different investments. You can liquidate it. And a lot of the times that works for business owners. So you can do that with this on top of it. And you're differentiating personal and business. You have an additional amount there. Maybe there is an unsecured term loan, line of credit, mer merchant cash advance situation we can add on top down the road now. But there are multiple situations to look at for getting you a personal loan for business. Now, that's going to conclude everything in this video. Look down below the description for all of that. And to get started with this, I'll leave the questionnaire form down below. So you can fill that out. That's where I would begin if you haven't already, where I can get you a very personalized and customized email response. Add this one on top of other options and other ones, a plethora of them, whether you can qualify for them or not. Give you a strategic roadmap. And for all other information, look down below. If you got value, please give it a thumbs up. Share it with others who you feel will get value out of it. It can be a complete stranger, friend, or family member. And if you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so and click that bell notification icon so you do not miss any future content I will be coming out with. And I believe that is going to conclude leave any comments down below if you have them and yeah so just be ready have the right documentation uh and know what you're getting yourself into and you'll be fine and you'll combat the origination fee the rates the amount that you get there will be alternatives to that whether that's what you wanted and then you can add something on top or there's another option to explore but being picky isn't going to necessarily get you always to where you want to be. You have to start somewhere and build your relationship up with myself, the lender, the underwriter, et cetera. So all alternatives too down below in the description and everything else to get a hold of me. But fill out that questionnaire if you haven't yet. And that's the best way as I have a very systematic approach of how I do things. That is everything for now. Talk soon. Bye.